Hi, my name is Anush Ramanthia and I'm a product manager at AWS. We're taking a deep dive to learn how AWS customers are using Amazon Recognition custom labels for their unique use cases. Let's get started. Hi everyone, we're excited to have Luca with us today. Luca is an AWS hero focused on machine learning and he's going to walk us through what he built. But before we get into that, Luca, why don't you introduce yourself? Hello, thank you for having me. I am a CTO at Neo Experience, which is an Italian-based company. I am passionate about machine learning and AI. Since my PhD, I've been working with computer vision and implementing new machine learning models in the computer vision domain to help people and customers to achieve their best goal. That's exciting. Quite the machine learning enthusiast. Um, Let's get started and start at the beginning. How did you first learn about Amazon Recognition and why did you choose to start using that service? I learned about uh, Amazon Recognition a couple of years ago when uh, the first features were released and then I followed all the development of the product and all the amazing features that AWS released through the years until recently when uh, Recognition Custom Labels was released, it was amazing to see how uh, it can be done, how it possible to be achieved using that technology. That's exciting. So um, I can't wait to start digging in, but let's start at the beginning. What is the problem you were trying to solve with computer vision? Basically, two challenges, two main challenges. The first one on the business challenge, uh, we had to detect a clean and dirty HVAC. If you think about the venting system in your home, uh, if you think about uh, uh, the air conditioning system in your home, it gets dirty uh, mm -hmm. time after time. And our um, one of my clients wanted to build a product that will be able to detect uh, the status of the uh, air conditioning system in very big buildings. So on the business domain, I wanted to uh, help this customer. I, I wanted to help them to build a product with the fastest time to market possible. Second, on the other hand, I know that training machine learning models from scratch, even using pre-trained uh, partial pre-trained models, is something that uh, is not an easy task and requires time and requires uh, hyperparameter optimization, requires a lot of work to be done in order to have a sufficient enough, uh, good enough model. Uh, so uh, I needed to address these two separate issues, and uh, this is the reason why I choose to use machine learning uh, recognition custom le levels to detect uh, HVAC dirty status. Yeah, that, I, that's super interesting um, to hear and you're right. It can be very time consuming to train and create those machine models, machine learning models, even with all of the resources that are available. Um, and that's exactly why we created Amazon Recognition Custom Labels. Uh, yeah, because uh, my time is valuable and also my team time is uh, uh, much more valuable uh, even from a an, uh, direct perspective. So we don't want to waste time doing a repetitive task and do things that can be done uh, in another way. But even on a budget perspective, because our clients are paying money for the time that we uh, use, that we spend on their projects. So uh, being able to lower uh, the amount of time wasted, uh, being able to uh, do something that before uh, wasn't possible because before I would have to train uh, the model for a full week and adjust parameters multiple times and uh, uh, even try to figure out how to improve the model accuracy uh, is something that is really super valuable. Uh, now, I am literally trained the model overnight uh, while I was sleeping. So Luca, we know labeling training images can be really tedious. How did you go about doing this? Yeah, I've been using SageMaker Ground Truth in order to uh, upload the images and uh, have uh, an easy to be used URL to labelize the images. So I've been able to send that URL to my client and they have been able just easily to label the images and to tell which one were dirty and which one were clean HVAC images. 
Luca, that's incredible. That seems like an incredible increase in productivity savings and a better solution overall that you got to for your client. Um, let's dig in a bit because I think it'll be helpful to show everyone how you built the solution. Do you want to walk me through the overall build? Yeah, uh, I asked them to share a few set of images that they had at their availability because uh, they have been collecting images of clean and dirty plants uh, since very long time. And they shared that they sent that images to me. I started to figure out uh, which characteristics, which kind of features each image uh, should have, and which image presented in common with the others. And then, uh, once that I was confident enough that I had a clear understanding of the business domain of the problem that we wanted to uh, to solve, I asked my client uh, to uh, differentiate the image and to tell me which images were good images, which images were bad images, in order to uh, shape better the, the business case and uh, the overall project that we were doing. Then after that, I asked my client to labelize the image, uh, the images in order to have a confident ground truth about that. And to achieve that, I used the SageMaker ground truth, which offered an easy to, you, to be used interface for my clients and even for people that are not well versed into machine learning, yeah. into image leveling. They just had to open the, uh, the link, the URL that they send them, then check the, if whether the image was clean or dirty and then labelize the image with just one click. And after that, I collected the whole dataset which uh, was already available on S3 and I fed the dataset into recognition custom label and just basically went to sleep because it was late in the night and the morning after I was able to uh, check the model, to test the model, to uh, perform model vali validation using the provided metrics and I discovered that astonishing uh, ratio, that astonishing accuracy of 0.92, of an F1 score of 0.92. And after that, I was able to test the model with uh, never before seen images and I checked that uh, uh, that model was uh, working great, greatly, then I called my client, I showcased them the solution, and then we started integrating that endpoint into the full-fledged system. That's awesome. And it seems like it was pretty straightforward and simple. Um, it sounds like you spent a lot of your time upfront on thinking about what your data set would be to train. And, you know, one of the gotchas might be incorrect images. How did you deal with that? Were you able to do that programmatically? Did you have to do it manually? Uh, this is a nice question because in real life problems, uh, you don't have already prepared data sets. Uh, this happens when you are doing your homeworks or when you are uh, doing a POC, but in real life problems, the images, the data sets came from a practical context, practical environments, and once you get them, you have a lot of images that do not belong to that data set, that they basically, they shouldn't be there. They are not images of data or uh, HVAC system, but maybe they are images of the gate uh, pushing the air into the system or an image of uh, uh, the, the complete plant or things that doesn't belong to that data set. And the, fir the first and most important step is to sort out, to pick up this, to pull these images out from uh, the data set in order to avoid any kind of bias uh, using images that do not belong to that context. This is something that uh, uh, I had to do manually the first time, but thanks to the time I saved using custom labels, I will be, I, I've been able to train a different model uh, that could be specialized to tell which images uh, belong to the dataset and which images should be removed by the dataset. So using uh, basically the same time, I have been able to train another model that uh, helps me to sort out the images and do not require having my client to share, cherry pick the images from the data set. That's, that's it. That's an incredible way to stack models to, to help you 
kind of streamline some of those manual processes that can certainly be very, very tedious. Um, so I guess one of the last questions is you were able to get some pretty impressive quality. I mean, an F score of 0.92 is, is pretty darn good with a single model training under an hour. Um, how did you refine your model and how did you work to improve it? I basically tested the model and then I cleaned the data set. So I removed from the data set the images that were not well performing uh, and uh, maybe they were wrong images. So I looked at the images that uh, fault on which the model faulted the detection, the inference, and I discovered that some of them uh, were wrong images that uh, I missed to remove from the data set. And then I retrained the model again in order to refine the accuracy of the model. And after that, I talked to my client and we decided uh, to make the model uh, more specialized uh, into being able to detect different duct shapes because you can have square shapes or round shapes uh, and different materials. And so we decided to use the same approach uh, on different and more specialized data sets in order to provide a better and more refined model. Uh, in order to do that, uh, we needed to have a compelling tool to make them able to uh, labelize the images. And here is where uh, SageMaker Ground Truth came into the play another time to save us time. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. It sounds like you were able to not only iterate and improve your models rapidly, but use feedback. Use the model inferences to correct and, and improve and build on what your initial models were. And you could do that because custom labels allowed you to focus on the data and the problem at hand, not so much the fine tuning or the parameter optimization or some of the nitty gritty of setting up a Python notebook. Yeah. Exactly. Awesome. Um, this was so fascinating and actually really exciting because who doesn't want to breathe clean air through their HVAC system? Um, thank you so much for walking through what you built. What's next for you and, and this solution? Uh, we are managing the development of the next iteration of the product. We are putting a lot of new technology into that system and even joining data coming from different machine learning models thanks to the fact that we have been able uh, to train the model with really, really uh, ease. And this means that uh, uh, we have been able, since the end of the first phase of the project, to focus on having more machine learning models on different topics and joining the results together to improve the system. That's awesome. So, it, I mean, what I'm hearing is the models that you were experimenting, experimenting with you could move to production almost instantaneously because of its ability to handle the scale and volume because you're you're working in production environments is that right yeah that's incredible this was an incredible way to use computer vision to build smart technology for hvac systems clean air is super important um, given your expertise now with the custom labels product. Are there other ways you see this being applied for your other customers, clients in other industrial or enterprise settings? Yeah. Here at New Experience, we are using custom labels uh, to ensure quality assurance into uh, plant and product inspection in the industrial plants. And also we are implementing solutions using uh, recognition custom labels to help uh, medical doctors die in the diagnosis uh, because we train the custom label to detect and to improve diagnosis into medical images. That's awesome. I can't wait to see what you build next, Luca. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me.